Okay, so I've had someone ask, you know, why is it that we use impedance and why do we bother with all this exponential notation stuff? So I thought I'd make some notes uh, just to help uh, in case you're confused about that. So uh, the basic problem that one might want to solve uh, is just say, let's suppose that someone gives you the current through an inductor and asks you to find the voltage, uh, and they tell you that that current is a sinusoidal steady state current, meaning that it's always been on and it always will be on. And it has the form uh, some real number, I naught, certain number of amps, times a frequency term uh, plus some phase of taking the cosine of that. So of course you can find that using the constitutive relation of an inductor, V equals L di dt, and take the derivative, you get an omega out in front from the chain rule there, and the cosine becomes a minus sign, and you get minus omega L sine omega t plus phi. But now, what about um, sort of trying to simplify that process? Now taking derivatives isn't that hard, but once you start to chain more complex systems together, um, you get, you know, as we know from solving all these second order differential equations uh, that come up when you do time domain analysis, um, can get pretty tricky. So is there a way to make it even simpler? It turns out there is. Um, if you write the current, uh, instead of just writing IL, you write a complex number, which we'll call IL tilde, and uh, you write it as e to the j omega t plus phi. So we wrote this so that the real part of this would be just the cosine omega t plus phi that we have up here. Um, then you can do some rearrangements and you end up with something like i naught tilde, which is now a complex number, e to the j omega t plus phi. Now, that of course is gonna give you a complex voltage. Um, which isn't very realistic. So just like we have to take the real part of the input um, to get the original input, we're going to have to take the real part of the voltage um, to get the answer in the end. So the answer is going to be the real part of this sort of tilde voltage. So let's try to find the tilde voltage first. Well, we just still use the element relation for the inductor. Um, this element relation is linear, so uh, you can just take real parts of it and imaginary parts of it, and these parts stay separate. So when you take that derivative, um, now it's an even easier derivative because you're left with e to the j omega t afterwards. So the j omega comes down from the chain rule and you get L times the original current uh, function. And we write that as some complex amplitude times e to the j omega t. So the idea is that this VL looks like this complex number times just this sort of boring e to the j omega t. And we do that just like we did up here. We wrote the current as this complex number times this boring e to the j omega t. But by writing it that way, if we extract these, these complex coefficients, we find that um, this VL is actually just equal to j omega l i naught, which is just a complex number times i naught. So it's like a complex form of Ohm's law, V equals I times R, except now it's ZL instead of R and it's a complex number. So we've reduced a problem that kind of involves these derivatives and a little bit of uh, thinking to something that's much more straightforward, just an Ohm's law problem. Unfortunately, it still involves some thinking because you have to understand these complex numbers. Um, where this is really gonna shine is when we start solving more and more complex problems. So sort of looking at it figuratively, you can think of the original problem uh, as just the real part of this new problem that we posed. And the new problem is this very simple DC problem times the e to the j omega t. And uh, this very simple DC problem is so simple it's just a resistor. But the resistor has this complex impedance. So we can solve that trivially. You know, we have I naught, we want to find VL tilde. Um, and it's just uh, j omega l, the resistance, or this, it's of course not, a real, not an actual resistance, it's an impedance, um, times the current. So that's, that's the voltage term. And then this e to the j omega t comes along. Well, there's a little bit of algebra which I've represented with the squiggly lines. There's an e to the j phi and this i naught, and uh, then you have to recognize the identity between cosines and sines. 
Uh, but at the end, you end out with minus omega L sine omega t plus phi, which was just uh, the same as we derived a little bit earlier up here. So I want to emphasize that we're doing this not because it's simpler for analyzing a single inductor, but because it's simpler for analyzing complex circuits. In particular, very often with these sinusoidal steady state problems, all we really care about are um, the ratios of outputs and inputs, and those are going to have uh, be much simpler to analyze um, because we don't aren't really going to care about the exact e to the j omega t and the exact phase. We're just going to be interested in the relative amplitudes and relative phases of two signals, and so we'll have to we'll get away with avoiding some of this later analysis.